Welcome to The Sky's the Limit with host D. Brown, the president and CEO of the P3 Group, the nation's largest minority public private partnership real estate developer. Here's D. Joining me today on the Sky's the Limit is Judge Gerald Robinson. Judge Gerald Robinson began his career in 1988 as a deputy jailer with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. Since that time, he rose through the ranks of the Sheriff's Office where he worked in the Uniform Patrol Division, Criminal Investigation Division, and was quickly promoted and served as Lieutenant, Captain, and Commander of the Uniform Patrol Division. After defeating his opponent in the November 2006 general election, on January 1st, 2007, he was sworn in as the first African-American sheriff in Jefferson County's history. He served in the post until retiring from the sheriff's office on December 31st, 2018. In 2018, he was elected as Jefferson County judge and was sworn in on January 1st, 2019. He is the first Jefferson County sheriff to be elected as Jefferson County judge. Please welcome my good friend, Judge Gerald Robinson to The Sky's the Limit. Judge, I'm glad to have you on the show today. Thank you, Dee, for having me this morning. I want to say good morning to Absolutely, everyone. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's my pleasure. And we'll jump right into the um, into the program. Uh, you've had a pretty storied, storied career uh, in law enforcement, uh, having served it, it, essentially your entire professional career uh, in that capacity. But I think in order to properly set the stage for the viewers, uh, let's kind of roll back uh, in time and talk about your early years, your childhood growing up. And so where did you grow up and what was your childhood like? I, I grew up the in a town of less than 900 people, uh, Humphrey, Arkansas, and uh, had a very good childhood. Uh, I had uh, both parents. Uh, my father was a uh, labor man, uh, uh, worked for one of the largest corporations, uh, uh, which is Rice and Foods. Uh, many people already know this, but probably the largest rice producers in the world. And uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, so I, I had the, the privilege of having both parents at home uh, and uh, was able to uh, grow up, have a rich childhood, uh, was poor, right. but didn't know I was poor. <laughs> didn't understand at the time that, uh, you know, how hard it was yeah. on my parents to do the things that they did. But, but listen, never missed a meal, was able to uh, grow up in a community where it was a community and everybody was able to raise uh, yeah, the so I talked to a lot of people, and uh, you know myself included, and we all grew up poor, but had no idea. Hey, look, when we got those hand-me-down pans from my, from my brother, you know, it was the coolest thing because, you know, hey, I love my, my, my brothers. And so when I got, got a chance to wear their clothes, I said, man, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in style. <laughs> no clue, man. Um, but growing up in Humphreys, um, what inspired you? When did you decide that you wanted to have a career in law enforcement? D, it's funny that you ask that uh, because I've had uh, – opportunity to reflect uh, over my life and I realized that uh, first grade when I was in the first grade six years old D I remember my first grade teacher Miss Margie Dobson asked we had to write down what we wanted to be in life when we grew up and uh, I put down it was two things that I want that I wanted to be one of them was a law enforcement officer that's what I wrote down I wrote yeah. down a police officer and the second was a professional really? football player uh, because I was I, I really loved the Dallas Cowboys and, and so still do to this day. But uh, it's funny because when I reflect back and look at that, I actually made the decision to be in law enforcement wow. at six That's years amazing. old. That's amazing. And, uh, and you stuck it through. But the, the interesting thing about it, you, you came in law, law enforcement at the bottom of the ranks. You started as a, uh, as a deputy jailer. You quickly oh, yes. rose through yes. uh, through the ranks and uh, became, you know, captain, uh, commander, and and then on to sheriff. Tell me about your career in law enforcement. And how you were able to kind of go through the ranks uh, so successfully? Well, one of one of the things, uh, D, I, I, I've always been a goal oriented person. I mean, you know, it, when I set my mind to something, I you know, I do it. 
But it's, it's interesting uh, that because when I graduated high school, I went straight into the military and uh, did a couple of years and then uh, come back home. And I was actually at a Humphrey basketball game where my high school superintendent saw me and said, hey, Gerald, uh, how would you like to work for the sheriff's office? And he said, the chief deputy is a good friend of mine. He said, I want to introduce you to him. He said, you're the only person I can think of that would really uh, do a great job. He and he has a good head on your shoulders. And so he introduced me to uh, uh, the chief deputy and his name was uh, Chief Lloyd uh, uh, Harrison. And uh, so uh, I, I got an opportunity to to meet him. And and at that time, too, uh, I met him and. After meeting him, I told him, I said, now, I, I want to go to work for the sheriff's office. I said, but I don't want this to be the final position yeah. that I have. And so I said, I'm going to start at the bottom. And so and that's how I got started. And uh, so worked my way through the ranks. It took a little while. Uh, I worked my way through the ranks. And uh, so uh, I worked with a sheriff uh, by the name of Doug wow. uh, Brazel. And uh, Doug, Doug Brazel was pretty stout in the state. I mean, he was, it was uh, widely known that he shook hands yeah. with the governor, you know, personally knew him and all those good things. But anyway, I, I was able to move into patrol uh, under his leadership. And then uh, my predecessor, uh, a, a man by the name of Bo Fontaine, who was also a military man. I, yeah. I'm a military man, military veteran, and this stuff. And so we, we hit it off very well. And uh, so, he really liked, uh, because he was a commander then, he really liked the way I wrote my reports and all those things and how dedicated I was to the craft. And uh, so uh, when he became sheriff, he ran for sheriff and became the sheriff. And he said, Gerald, he said, I really want you to, uh, I'm going to transfer you to the criminal investigation division. And uh, so when that happened back in 1999, D, I really think I, I really think at that time I really hit something that I man I was just passionate. Yeah. I loved investigation, and so uh, that's where my I to rise in the ranks. Uh, I quick made sergeant and uh, then lieutenant, and uh, then something really really good happened to me. I got chosen to go to the FBI National right. Academy. And let me explain that, that, that you know, less than 1% of law enforcement uh, get an opportunity to go to that school. And it is the most prestige law enforcement school that you can uh, attend, which is in Quantico, yeah. Virginia. And uh, so coming back from that, uh, I, made, uh, I made captain, uh, some other things happened. I went back, I, I commanded the criminal investigation division, then I commanded the patrol division, and I went back to the criminal investigation division. And then uh, both on, I was fortunate enough to be chosen as uh, his chief deputy. Uh, little did I know the significance of that because I was the first African American chief deputy that the Jefferson County wow. Sheriff's Office ever had. And 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 didn't think yeah. about it at the time, D. I mean, you know, because I, I was just focused on on law enforcement in my career, and so and uh, after that. Uh, a few years as chief deputy, Bo Fontaine said, hey, he came to me and said, I, I'm, I'm retiring. He said, Gerald, I, I want you to take my place. And oh, it came with a lot of prayer, D. I had because it was a yeah. situation. And, and But again, I, I, after that, the story is right. became sheriff and and first African-American sheriff elected uh, to Jefferson County. As, uh, as That's a, uh, it's a great story. I got a question for you. Superintendent. Yes that made the introduction to you back when you became deputy jailer, was he around to see you become sheriff? He was around to, to see me become sheriff. He is also, he's okay. still living today. His name is Sonny Sonny Davis, Davis. And I'll, I'll never forget. I'll never forget his name was Sonny Davis. And he came up to me and, and let me tell you the, I, I, I really <laughs> shouldn't share this, but see my nickname growing up, See, my middle name is uh, Lewis. And so I developed this nickname. Everybody called me Lukey. And so that that just resonated. So if you're from my hometown and you call out the name Lukey, they know who, who you're talking about. But anyway, uh, son, uh, Mr. Davis came to me one day after I, I was elected. And uh, he never called me Gerald. He said, Lukey? He said, I'm so proud of you. He said, I knew from that moment when I talked to you that night, he said, I knew you were going to do great things. 
And he said, I'm very, very proud of you. So that, you know, that made me feel really well. Really good, you know. Yeah. Yes, he helped write history. And, and uh, so Did that, you that's have any, uh, any mentors or sponsors, like in law enforcement, that you that kind of help pay the way for you, help you kind of? Oh, yes, several. Uh, you know, I can I can call out several names. Uh, a good friend of mine who since has passed away, Columbus Holmes, uh, when when I come aboard, as a matter of fact, uh, Columbus used to work security uh, for the uh, basketball games and things like that. When I played uh, high school basketball and I was the, the team captain, all that good stuff, and, and uh, I used to see Columbus and I said, man, that guy really, really looks good in that uniform. And I mean, he was sharp yeah. from head to toe. Told him one day we was going into the dressing room, and I told Columbus, I said, "You know what?" He said, "One of these days, man, I'm gonna be just like you, <laughs> just as clean as you." He started laughing, and and little did I know when I made that statement, little did I know I was gonna be working for the sheriff's office. And so it, it's kind of funny how you can speak a things into absolutely, absolutely. Existence. That that so as a man yeah. thinketh, so shall he become. Yes, right. That's right. And and so he was just one of them, and 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 uh, Charles Lobs, Bernard Adams, just different people yeah. like that that was uh, very deep into the sheriff's office and had great influence on helping me, uh, tutoring me, and and uh, giving me guidance uh, in those times. And happy, it, they really helped me in the yeah. In my when career. you became sheriff, one of your big initiatives was to really um, implement community policing. And so, um, and obviously that's a big buzzword uh, in law enforcement uh, today as well. Uh, tell my, me and my viewers and listeners uh, why you were so um, passionate about community policing and what, what did you achieve in that area? Well, I really felt like uh, there was a disconnect between the community and law enforcement. Uh, I saw it as a, a deputy patrolman and I and being African American, there was a distrust uh, among uh, our people, and uh, so I wanted to to use coin the phrase "user friendly." I wanted to make the, the sheriff's office user friendly to the point to where people respected us, uh, and so I developed programs uh, such as the uh, Adopt a Grandparent program. Uh, where deputies would go out and visit the elderly, elderly, they could sign up. You know, in, in many, you know, most of the time, you're elderly or uh, live alone, or or their yeah. children work, and and you know, it's not they don't have many people to really kind of look at them. So we developed those programs. Uh, we developed uh, programs such as uh, the uh, Operation Mother's Day, where we uh, uh, took on deadbeat dads who wasn't paying child support and, <laughs> yeah. and things like. That. Uh, we did uh, community work where we I developed a Jefferson County clean team where I would uh, not have the prisoners sitting in jail, but I would uh, uh, instead of sitting in jail, I would have them out working on the, on the roads and those things, picking up paper and things like that, making our community and everything look better. So uh, as as I progressed in my in my uh, tenure, you know, uh, people really felt comfortable with the uh, with the sheriff's office. And uh, that first year, I also did uh, something called the Sheriff's Fun Day, where once a year we would uh, come together and uh, uh, give free food. Uh, I would with my sponsors, different ones, and they would donate Walmart, you know, you, you name it, Target, uh, Lowe's, Different vendors such as that would, would donate different things to us where we would give uh, things to the community like bikes, electronics, all those things. We had fishing derby where we would get trophies for the, the, the kid who uh, caught the biggest fish and the most fish, all yeah. those things. And also had uh, rides. We had uh, carnival rides. We had bouncy houses. And that became very popular and did that every year. And so the Sheriff Fund Day became popular. So, and what I did was allow community to get an opportunity to see us as law enforcement right. in a different light, to understand we have yep. families, to understand yeah. we go to church, to understand that, you know, uh, we're not the bad guy. Right. We're there to be of assistance to you. And uh, D, it was great. I, I, I'm telling you, I had a very, very good career as the uh, in law enforcement. 
and I was elected six, six times. times. So wow. six times and never never defeated. Wow, six that's times. A, that's amazing. That's amazing. And you know, I think it's been proven, man, that community policing is is uh, effective. And it's just, um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that a lot of communities don't take that seriously and realize how you can really bridge the cap, the gap between the community and law enforcement by using those tactics that you just described. Um, one of the things that uh, I know you've been quoted on is uh, when you ran the sheriff's office, uh, you believed in a philosophy called participatory management and where you allowed all of the employees to have a voice in the operations of the sheriff's office. Tell me about that management philosophy. Well, D, uh, I felt that my officers, my deputies were the boots on the ground. And, uh, you know, in many instances, they, they kind of knew what was working for them and what didn't work. And, oh, I had the grand scheme overall, but I wanted them to share in the, the, the uh, decisions that were made uh, to tailor the sheriff's office to be the best that it could be. And uh, so by allowing my division commanders, uh, the, the ideas of, of deputies, uh, we had staff meetings every month uh, we, uh, to see what worked and what didn't work. And, and, and so they were more, more involved and uh, made us more of yeah. a family. It, it, they understood that, hey, just by virtue of my title, I'm the sheriff. I mean, so it wasn't any disciplinary uh, you know, where where people took for granted, but they felt welcome and they felt like they were a part of uh, right. something big. Right. And so uh, that's why I developed that type of management style, and it was very no, successful. That's a, and it's a, good, it's a good management style. I believe that your, your employees have to have ownership. They have yeah, they have because to have they don't, they won't, you know, they, if they're not bought into the, the, the system, the philosophy, they don't feel like they have a voice, uh, then, you know, you, you look up one day and, they, and they're gone somewhere else, man. So it's, uh, it's a great, great way to run a, run an a office, a business or, or organization. Now, yeah, yes. now when you were yes. sheriff, I know, uh, one of the big projects you, you tackled was the, the construction of a new county jail. Uh, and you had a lot of other amazing uh, achievements. So what, what would you kind of rank as your top achievements while you were sheriff? While I was sheriff, uh, the, uh, I built three buildings. I was uh, uh, involved in building three buildings as, as sheriff because wanting to meet the needs uh, that uh, we had some failures in. And, and uh, one of them was uh, I, we built a district court building. I finished the, uh, the jail and I built a new sheriff's office. And uh, so to bring everybody under one roof, because at that particular time, uh, all of my divisions were in different locations. And it made it very hard to, to relay uh, communication. You know, uh, everybody wasn't under one roof. And so uh, my biggest achievement is was to uh, build a new sheriff's office and uh, bring everybody under one roof. It made, a, it made us better, it made us better communicators, uh, and uh, it, it didn't separate us because, uh, you know, criminal investigation division wasn't over in yeah. another building and the patrol wasn't in one building, so we could all come together and kind of uh, come together and uh, work things out, talk about things, and, uh, and so uh, that was one of my biggest achievements. Uh, but I tell you, D, uh, you know, the biggest thing is, is that I really like is in my tenure that I'm made the sheriff's office yeah. at the end than it was when I first took over. And so to me, that was the greatest accomplishment because we are well recognized around the state uh, as one of the premier law enforcement agency in, in the state. Yeah, you, um, you, you charted a... Um... Uh, a very great course uh, as, as sheriff. But the interesting thing about the story, though, on December 31st, 2018, you retired from the sheriff's office. And the very next day, you were sworn in as Jefferson County, Arkansas County Judge. So talk to me about <laughs> what inspired you to run for judge. Well, D, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, when I made the decision to retire, uh, and many people may, when if they hear this, they'll, they'll know what I'm talking about. You know, I wanted to go into the sheriff's office with my head up and I wanted to leave yeah. with my head up. I didn't want to leave the office in shame or anything like that. And so 
when I had accomplished all those things that I wanted to accomplish and, and that God blessed me to accomplish, um, my my uh, vision, my effort was to leave with my head up. And and so it was really interesting that, man, I was yeah. ready to go. I knew my season was up. And then listening is good. I knew my season was up and I was leaving on the terms. But some things went on that, uh, you know, uh, the previous county judge, uh, who was an African American, uh, decided not to run. And so I didn't know that. And, uh, me and my uh, fiance, now my wife, uh, we were visiting a restaurant and so they saw it was a uh, the county judge and a group of pastors and so when i came in i walked in and they they looked at me and, and uh man they were all looking sad and i said what's going on so i sit down with them because i'm i'm just that guy that i i sit down and uh socialize with everybody and, and uh, so they were looking all sad and the county judge told me he said sheriff i was uh uh intending to call you to let you know that i won't be running uh for county judge <laughs> And, uh, and so uh, one of the pastor who was a really good friend of mine, he said, uh, judge, I mean, he said, sheriff, he said, uh, how would you like to run for a county judge? I said, <laughs> not no, but <laughs> heck no. I said that, uh, you know, I had had my, uh, my, my time and I was ready to go home and, you know, look, look forward yeah. to some other things. And, and so he hit me with something deep. Uh, before I left the table, he said, Gerald, I've known you for a long time. He said, I know you're a praying man. He said, I know, uh, you know, your relationship with God. He said, I want to ask you one thing. And I said, what's the uh, pastor? He said, would you pray about it? And I said, yes, I would. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I told him that, I was saying yeah. in my mind, saying, <laughs> man, I ain't thinking about this guy. But my my conscience uh, and my relationship with God had convicted me, and I prayed about it. And when I prayed about it, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, if this is something that you want me to do, I said, I need you to guide me on this. And so I, I went to bed that night, and, and, and I woke up the probably about 6 o'clock that morning, and I hadn't gotten my answer. And uh, so... I went into a, a deep, deep sleep. And I, and D, I promise mm -hmm. you, it was about four hours. And it was the best rest that I had in a long time. And I woke up. And in that, while I was sleeping, uh, the Lord was showing me that he wanted me to be judged. And so when that was that type of things happen, you wake up and you say, <laughs> okay, God, what right. do you want me to do? I say, I need confirmation. It's crazy. So I had to call my sisters, go back just a second. I, I had called my sisters the night before and asked them what they thought about it. You know, I, cause you know, my family support, supported me all during my, my career. And so I, I called my oldest sister and uh, I didn't tell her at the time. I just told her that I needed yeah. to talk to her about something. And uh, I also called my youngest sister and I, I told her the same thing. And so fast forward again, I get up. And so I'm in to go visit my sister and ask her uh, what she think I should do. And before I could get to my sister's house, there was a uh, car, and I'm at the time, I'm still the sheriff now, that pulled in front of me and I almost hit the guy. And so I put my blue lights on and I pull up beside him and saying, you know, hey, man, what, what's going on with you? We're, you know, he rolls his window down and is one of my biggest supporters. And before I could even get it out of my mouth to fuss at him, he pointed at me. He said, Gerald, he said, you need to run for county judge. He said, I don't know what's going on. Hank, why he's not running, but you need to be you need to run for county judge. And yeah, that. Startled. It the it literally startled. And so I told him that I was uh, thinking about it. He said, "No, don't think about it." He said, "You're gonna be the next county. You're gonna we're gonna do what we need to do to get you in." And I said, "Wow, yeah, that was the first time." So we I leave him, and I go to my sister's house. I get out of my sister's house, 
and I walked through the door. And I guess by then my, my older sister had heard the news and my sister, my older sister, Sheena, she said, you're too old, you're too young to retire. She said, you need to run for another office. I said, what? I said, well, that's what I came to talk to you about. That's twice. <laughs> D, the last, I'm sitting there talking to my older sister. My youngest sister run, comes through her door because they live right beside one another. My youngest sister comes in the door with the paper. Gerald, Hank Wilson not running for judge. You need to run for county judge, boy. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. Three times, D, before I could right. open my mouth to tell him that I was going to, I was thinking about running for county judge. It came to me. And that's the story. That's, you know, that's how I started. And that's how I ran for county wow, judge. And the rest is history. <laughs> the rest is history. Now, when you, when you came into office, I know you had a number of uh, early initiatives and accomplishments that you wanted to get done. Uh, talk a little bit about those uh, and what you did kind of your your first uh, year or two in office. D, uh, let, let me tell you that, man, it was a struggle. And, I, and I'll tell you why. The county, we were right. broke. Man, we had so many financial challenges that, man, I I, I just didn't know, but I I just I just had to pray, uh, you know, to get get us out. And I asked God before I even took over to uh, to lead me, to guide me, and how we could do those things. And uh, so I knew that the first thing I had to do was balance the budget. I knew where our uh, problems lie because they were we were top heavy in in. Uh, in people and employees. I was in a situation where Jefferson County had a declining population. At one time, we were like the second largest county in the state and we fell to like, the we lost the most population of any county in the, in the, in the state. And so as we had the de declining populations, we had to make adjustments. And uh, so in doing so, I came in, uh, uh, working with the elected officials and say, hey, you guys, this is where we are. I'm sharing with you what we need to do. This is the only way we can do it. And of course, you know, D, right. when you make changes in any type of business, Absolutely. you're going to have resistance. Uh, did it make some people mad? Yes, I did. Uh, but we had to do what we needed to do in order for us to progress. Uh, we have a reserve of $30,000. And that was not going to get it. So right away, thirty thousand dollars. Wow, thirty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars. And uh, mind you, uh, making the cuts that we did, I took cars from elected officials. We reduced uh, employees, and, and and we didn't just send employees home, but those where we had like open slots, we re we we cut those. The first the first year, I asked each elected official to reduce one slot. Uh, and uh, we also found some technology and things like that to help us save money, uh, such as over internet IP, uh, you know, solar systems to cut down on the utilities yeah. and all those good. And uh, so we were able to start saving money right away. But little did I know, uh, he, I told him when I first, I said, look, short of a catastrophe, and this was on my first, first uh, couple of days, of being in office as county judge, met with them. I say, short of a catastrophe, we will be in financial ruin if we don't get ourselves together. Well, the little did I know, six months down the road, we had a historic oh, wow. flood. If we had not made those changes, we would have been totally bankrupt. So making those changes right away made a difference. And uh, so from that point, we continue to progress, continue to do those things, reduce, uh, uh, invest in more technology and reduce our workforce. And in doing that, that $30,000 reserve that we talked about yeah. when I first took over is now $4 million. And uh, so, and in the process, being able to build Absolutely. three new buildings uh, you know, uh, a new health department, a new uh, coroner's office, and a, a new veteran service office. And uh, so 
we have been able to do some great things because we have partnership with some great people. Judge, and so I'll, I'll come in on that, especially at, at this point. Um, not only because, of course, my, my company, P3 Group, um, are doing those transactions with you, but I think the, the highlight of that whole deal is that Moody's rated the county A- minus uh, on the transaction, right? So you went from the brink of bankruptcy Yes, we had a <laughs> we had a D rating. <laughs> and, and the interesting thing about it was, people told us that oh, you'd never get a rating on Jefferson County, and uh, Moody's rated you guys A minus because of all the uh, uh, work that you've done, all the financial uh, controls you put in place, the financial management that you executed on, and so uh, and 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 you have three uh, three beautiful buildings that are going to serve the public well. Uh, because those buildings are actually providing much needed services to uh, to the community. So they're, they're, transform right. they're transformational. And so that leads me to the next question, though. When you first came into office, you said you wanted to build three things, communications, relationships, and buildings. And, of course, we just kind of touched on the buildings uh, aspect of it. But what about the other two, communication and relationships? How successful have you been with those two? Well, uh very successful. You know, if you have needs and you have wants, and, and uh, you know, it's kind of like a, 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 uh, one of my favorite verses in, in the Bible, Matthew 7 and 7, Matthew 7, chapter 7, uh, verse, it says, ask and it shall be given. Seek right. and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. My my grandparents and my, my parents, a closed mouth right. will never get fed. So you have to be able to communicate you have to be able to, uh, and, and by communicating, you can build right. relationships. And in order for anybody to do anything, uh, I, I admire you in that uh, aspect because uh, number one, you're a great communicator, and number two, you you believe in Absolutely. building relationships. And so let me get to the relationship part. So by communicating, uh, even when we first met and getting an opportunity to sit down and talk with you, uh, I share yeah. my visions with you. And by sharing my vision with you, uh, we were able to do these three projects. And so uh, well, building a relationship with you has resulted in the fact that we have, uh, again, three public buildings that, that will the public will be able to uh, enjoy and use. Uh, so I built communication. Yep. I built relationships, not only uh, with you and others, right. financial institutions, right. uh, Vendors, uh, yeah. from doctors, lawyers, uh, everything. And so by being able to do that, uh, we have gotten to the final point where I have been right. able to build right. buildings. And, and just to touch on the relationship piece, Three. Uh, just the relationship, you, you mentioned financial institutions. Simmons Bank donated $1 million to the project, right? But based on the relationships that you, exactly. that you built with, with them, so... Uh, kudos to you because that was a, a heavy burden off the taxpayers' back by being able to bring that type of uh, financial resource uh, to the transaction. It really was, D, and and uh, the way you guys have uh, structured uh, the way you do things has uh, uh, has made it a, a the transition uh, an easy transition to be able to do that and to sit down with Simmons Bank. You know, Simmons Bank started uh, is is. Pine Bluff is his home. This is the foundation right. of Simmons Bank. They have expanded to six other states, but it's it's funny that we when we talk about Simmons Bank and, and what they've donated, the other piece to that is is that Simmons Bank was so impressed with the structure of how the public private partnership works that they say, Hey, I don't want any other right. banks to get this. We, we, want, this we yeah. want absolutely and so that that tells me two things. Number one, they right. believed in my vision. Right. Number two, they believe in the public-private partnership and how you right. have structured it. And because let's face it, banks don't uh, jump on deals; right. so they feel That's like right. they're gonna lose money. That's right. And and so for them to do that, that was a that, hey, we have built a great relationship. And uh, I think that uh, that partnership has uh, uh, given us uh, the, the direction that we can even right, do even right. more. So that's why when they go to the uh, the health department or the VA uh, the VA center, 
They'll see the Simmons Bank lobby in both of those facilities because of their support for those projects. Absolutely. Yes. Now yes, you have yes. um, you've done a lot in your first term as county judge. Uh, what do you think is your most significant accomplishment so far? My most significant uh, accomplishment is number one, yeah. balance the budget. That's that's number one, because if you don't have the funds to operate, there's there's right. you can't do anything. And so balancing the budget was the was the biggest thing. Uh, number two, uh, building these relationships that I have I have built. And uh, number three, have been able to accomplish more because as we have uh, balanced the budget, uh, because as the county judge, you know that they're that I'm the chief right. executive of the county, number one, so I'm responsible for the the total budget of the county. Uh, number two, I am over all county roads, and so by curtailing uh, and and making our uh, uh, money more flourishable uh we have been able to do more roads uh and uh to really care of those neighborhoods that that uh, really needed uh, road work done uh so those are my greatest accomplishments and then to be able to uh put money in the reserves i've, I've built relationships uh with the saracen casino uh that has allowed uh, uh my signature allowed a casino to be built in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Without right. that, that wouldn't have happened. Uh, also responsible for CARTI uh, Cancer Center, uh, instrumental in uh, them coming here, uh, instrumental in other right. businesses uh, coming, and that has created over 2,000 right. jobs and uh, over $600 million in capital improvement. in capital improvement, so over 2,000 new jobs yes. in your very first term in office. Very that's first that's significant. That's 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 unbelievable. Um, what do you want your legacy to be? When, you, when it's at the end of the day, when you when you hang your boots up for the last time, what, what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, D, that's that's a difficult question. I, as I ponder on that, uh, you know, I hope people look at Gerald Robinson and remember that he was a visionary. Uh, that he was a servant. Uh, and I want to be known as a good servant. I want my children to be able to uh, see that their father was instrumental in making the world, even if, uh, if it was a small part of the world, right. a better place. And I think uh, by what we have created, the communication, the relationships, and the buildings, I think people will be able to see that uh, Gerald Robinson made Jefferson County Judge, a better. You know, place. that's what it takes. It takes each one of us being committed to making the world a better place. Just a little, little sliver that we can take care of ourselves. A bunch of us doing that makes a, a, a world of a difference, a big difference uh, in the lives of many, yes. many, many people. So there are thousands of people right. there in, in and around Jefferson County and abroad that have benefited from your your, your great work, but. I want to close by asking asking this because I never can can miss the opportunity to to highlight this this point. So <laughs> you are a member of the greatest fraternity in the world, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. And you're a brother. Kappa <laughs> Alpha Psi, baby. Sure. That's my, my fraternity brother. So, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. we, we can, we can never miss the opportunity to highlight the frat, man. So talk to me about the brotherhood and how it has benefited you both personally and professionally well let, let me let me tell you the uh you know being a part of kappa alpha Psi, uh, uh we I, I really believe and i'm not taking away from any of the other fraternities i say because i have great partners and great friends uh with the other fraternities but uh kappa alpha Psi has been so significant in my uh success uh num number one uh i feel like it it we are men of principle. Uh, we are men who have uh, strong relationships uh, with God. Right. We promote that. And uh, I, I never fail to take the opportunity to give God all the praise. Uh, but Kappa Alpha Psi has uh, un uh, united us throughout right. this great country uh, to network, to be able to move right. things forward. And <laughs> hey, man, let's, let's face it. 
We them boys. We them. We them. That's right. We them boys. But, but but guess what? We 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 yeah. have made our marks throughout history to be men of right. accomplishments and honorable uh, achievement and every field of human endeavor. Every field of human endeavor. So we have never uh, missed that opportunity uh, to not only promote God. But to promote right. ourselves and to That's help right. That's others. Right. In order to be successful, you have to bring people That's along right. with. That's right. You can't. You cannot do it alone. Journey. It's not a selfish journey. We have to be able to bring people along with us, and I think that helps makes us Absolutely. successful. Judge, it's been great having you on the show. I appreciate you taking time out your busy schedule to be here with me, and I wish you all the uh, success in your upcoming uh, election in May. And uh, of course, you know, I'm, I'm right there with you, brother. I love you just like your family. <laughs> hey, I, I yeah, love you too, brother. We are family. <laughs> we are family. We are family. We are family. And uh, D, I, I really appreciate you. Let me take the time to tell your listeners that, you know, how much I appreciate you. Uh, uh, number one, being a, a man of God, being a family man, and uh, being an entrepreneur. Uh, I, we both know the. the the uh, things that we have gone through, it had right. not been easy. easy. Uh, you know, I, I didn't talk to the listeners about some of the things that I went through, but, you know, it has not been easy. And we still struggle right. with certain things uh, because we're not taken serious because of, uh, you know, either education, right. race or right. whatever. But, uh, but we still strive to move forward. And, and man, I just appreciate you being a young man and doing the, the things that you're doing. More than welcome. So thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, County Judge yeah. Gerald Robinson. This has been The Sky's the Limit with D. Brown. To find out more about D, go to dbrownceo.com or Google D. Brown CEO. And to connect with the P3 Group, check out the P3 Group Inc.com. The Sky's the Limit is a production of self made D. Brown CEO.